more day. One more day. Thank you for waking me up. One more day. One more day. for one more day. I said, oh, give God the praise for one more day. I said, oh, give God praise for one more day. Anybody just excited that you got to wake up this morning and see the beautiful sunshine that you know that your bed was not, your food was full and your sheep was not, your winding sheets. And God looked past your faults, saw all of your needs and desires to give you one more day to praise His name. You know you were created to praise Him, right? Oh, you were created to praise him, right? The rocks could not praise him. The mountains could not praise him. The trees could not praise him. The dogs could not praise him. The cats could not praise him. The horses could not praise him. Everything else that was created by him was not able to praise him. That's why he gave you a mouth. I said, that's why he gave you a mouth. That's why he gave you a mouth. That's why he gave you a mouth to praise him. That's why you can put your hands together to praise him. No other animal can put their hands like together, the praise of life, we can praise them. We were created to praise them. So we come into this house one more time to praise His holy and His righteous name. God our Father, in the name of your darling Son, we thank you for one more day. We do not take it for granted that you've given us one more day of breath in our bodies. And because you've given us one more day of breath, your word says that we're supposed to worship you and to praise you. We give you gratitude for all of your bountiful blessings, God. We come into this place, in this house of your habitation, to worship you in spirit and in truth, God. Some come for one thing, some come for others. Some come out of obligation, some come because Grandma told them it was the place you were supposed to go on Sundays. So somebody came for it out of expectation. cold heart a little warmer today God so much is going on in the last so many of our families and friends are dealing with sickness family dealing with death hearts are heavy today God oh but we know there is a savior we know there is a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer God God, we are mindful that there's some times, God, where we can't trace you. But there's some things you're doing in our lives and in the lives of others that sometimes don't seem fair to our thinking and our liking, God. But when we can't trace you, God, we have to learn how to trust you. To know that our ways are not your ways and our thoughts are not your thoughts. God, your manual says that secret things belong unto you, God. There
there's some things we're not going to know by and by. I don't care what the songwriter said. We're not, there's some things we're not going to know by and by. We're not going to understand it, God. That's when we have to trust you, God. Knowing that you know better for us than we know what's better for ourselves, God. And there's a witness in here today, even though we're praying, there's a witness in here today, God, that knows that when we thought we knew what was best for us and you changed the paradigm, you shifted our direction, God, what ended up coming out of our lives was better if we had stuck with it. Because you took control, God. So, God, we thank you, God, for ordering our steps. Now, bless God. Bless the infirm. Bless the sick and the shut in. Bless those who are grieving right now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Incline thine ear to me. Grant us, O oh Lord, thy peace. We put our trust in thee. The strength that we need, supply our every need. Teach us your holy way. These are the words we pray. Teach us your holy way. These are the words we pray. Teach us your holy
Thank you all so very much. Some ministry moments going on this week. Pause right there. On tomorrow, on tomorrow, I will be sending out the link for those of you who have pre-registered or signed up to go with us um, next October to Israel. So tomorrow, I will be sending out the link so you can begin registration for our Israel 2020 um, trip. Um, we do have um, 20 more seats left. We're doing very well with, with persons who have pre-registered. Um, if you do not receive the link tomorrow, if you look in your email Tuesday or Wednesday and you don't have the link, um, please call or email um, Frenchie um, to make sure we have your right email address. But they will be sent out tomorrow. Again, if you don't have it by Tuesday or Wednesday, please call Frenchie and make sure we have your correct email address. Thank you so much. Next. And again, we still have seats available if you're interested. Children's Choir Registration. Um, our children sing um, between during the school year um, here at the Brooklyn Northeast Church. They're doing registration after church today across the street at Hope Academy. Bible study resumes this Wednesday, September the 11th. What a good day to resume Bible study on September the 11th, amen, um, at 6.45 p.m. So we invite you to be here at 6.45. We are canceling Kaya for tomorrow night, and we'll be canceled for tomorrow night, and we'll resume Kaya on Monday, October the 7th at 6.30 at our usual location. Our new members quarterly orientation class, again, for those of you who want to knock out new members orientation in one day, you can come Saturday, September the 28th from 9 to 12, amen? The quarterly class will be September 28th from 9 to 12. On that same day, the Men's Fellowship is having our financial planning seminar on that same day beginning at 8.30 from 10 a.m. I don't know who's going to have the biscuits and who's going to have the donuts, so you find both <laughs> wherever they are, amen? So both of those on the 28th. Again, we ask you to download our app. How I many of you all have the app? How I many of you all? And for those of you who don't have the app, we rebuke you right now. In the, <laughs> the, app is, the app is wonderful for a lot of reasons. Number one, all the sermons are on the app. Um, that afternoon, the, all the sermons are on the app. How many of y'all remember being on the west side? You had to buy tapes. Yeah. All right, you don't have to buy tapes over here. You just go to the app, amen? Tell your neighbor, go to the app, go to the app. But also announcements are on the app, all right? And so if you have your note, we don't bother you. I uh, know God, we don't bother you. But, you know, if there's an emergency. If we need to get something out, you have your notifications on. Um, when things get canceled, when things are postponed, we put it on the app. So it's a wonderful thing um, to have. You got everything else on the app. You order your food on the app. You record your football games on the app, amen. You can shop on the app. I think Amazon is my first app. Amen. So we want to thank you that you have the app or living by the app, amen. 
Amen. All right, it, it comes in the life history of, of, of our church. And let me also, before I go into that, thank um, Sister Veronica Isaac for once again, I think she's done it every year since the passing of her husband, for providing the beautiful flowers at the altar in loving memory of her husband, the late Henry Isaac, and we thank God for her. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask William and Skyland um, to bring up Carson right now in front of me. Oh, y'all come stand right before me. My brothers and my sisters, uh, not because we are traditional or right school, no such thing as old school, it's right school. Um, we believe, as our ancestors did, that it's so very important. And dedicating back to God that which he has given unto us based upon Hannah's promise unto God as she had been barren for years that if God blessed her and that she promised that no matter how he blessed her that she was going to return that blessing back unto God and when God blessed Hannah with Samuel she made full commitment to her promise by bringing Samuel back to the altar of God and telling God, thank you for that handkerchief. <laughs> Daddy, you should have had it pinned down if you wanted to stay in there. <laughs> Amen. William and Skyland, do you all believe that Carson is a gift from God? Do you promise before God and your family in this assembly that you all will love him, take care of him, introduce God to him so that one day that he might rise up and call you all blessed if so say we do will the grandparents please stand amen amen are there any godparents any godparents all right amen you the godfather oh my god <laughs> I, I'm, th I'm not saying that because of your, um, <laughs> of your close proximity to my complexion. <laughs> but bro, I got seven. Uh, so I know that's a lot of birthdays, a lot of Christmas. Uh, your job is to get good presents, man. All right? All right? Don't you forget, amen? Aunts and uncles. Aunts and uncles, amen, and the entire village that will help in the raising of Carson. I'm on the other side of, a, I think, a, they say it's a 24-hour bug, but it's been three days of a stomach flu. This ain't the day to hug your pastor, amen. <laughs> if you came because you needed a hug for your pastor, you need to come back, amen. But out of abundance of caution, I'm going to ask Reverend Best to come and hold Amen. Carson Amen. as I pray from far away. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he ain't done that in a long time. He don't even know what direction to go. <laughs> Baby Pampa be all on backwards on his head, around his neck. Don't put Kool-Aid in the bottle. Don't have Ron keep your child, amen. God bless your hearts. Let us bow. God, our Father, we come now seriously. Thanking you, first of all, for life. We believe, God, that you are the giver and the sustainer of life. And that you had given this baby boy to these wonderful parents, to these wonderful grandparents, to these aunts and these uncles and this village that will help raise Carson. We thank you right now, God, that you've given them life and you're going to help them sustain this life. We know that he is a gift from you, God. And so we bring him right now to your altar.
to bless him and to thank you, God. As Ron leaves, his hands upon him, God, we ask that no hurt, no harm, no danger come into his life. Even though there will be little illnesses, there will be medicines, there will be doctors, God, but let there be no illness that prevents him from living out his God-given destiny, God, that nothing will prevent him from growing, God, that will, nothing will thwart his development, God. God, help his parents to make sure that he is in church so that he knows the fear and admonition of the Lord. And so one day that he will give his life to you, our Christ, and rise up and call his parents blessed. As we lay our hands upon his head, we bless him right now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And all of God's children say, Amen. I'm going to do it. so much. God bless you. time in the house of the Lord. There's offering time in the house of the Lord. We thank you for what you've already given to the mission and the ministry of the Brooklyn Church, knowing that your tithes and your offerings are at work in either one of the seven entities that compromise Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Church has compromised the seven unique entities, being the Brooklyn West Campus, the Brooklyn Northeast Campus, the Brooklyn Wellness Center, the Brooklyn Banquet and Conference Center, the Brooklyn Academy, the Brooklyn Credit Union, and the Brooklyn Lakeview Empowerment System. And our tithes and our offerings are used for the upbuilding of the kingdom here on earth. Amen. And so we also thank those of you who are giving to our capital fund as we pay off the mortgage on this building and we expand to the next stage of what God has us to do. Amen. Make sure that if you're doing an envelope that on that line that says BNECF that you're putting something there and also if you're giving online, you can also give to the BNECF campaign. Let us bow and thank God in advance for what he's about to do as we worship him through our giving. God our Father again, we come on this beautiful day that you've given us. Just say thank you God for all of your bountiful blessings. We don't count it for granted, God, that you woke us up this morning. But we also take it for granted, God, that you've given us something. That you've given us either our salaries, God. You've given us something, even our pension, our social security check, God. You, you've given us something that we can give back unto you, that we've had fruit growing in our garden, God. And there's some that don't have any fruit, God. There's some that are struggling financially, God, either by life circumstances, even by the faults of their own, God. But God, you have given unto us, God. And so we're so grateful knowing that all of it comes from you, God. And because it has come from you, God, we just are excited to give you back a portion of it. To say thank you for first giving to us. And knowing that when we give back unto you, God, not only will you multiply it, God, but others will be blessed through our giving, God. We ask you to bless us and keep us and strengthen us, God. For this preacher needs your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
thing Even though I've done wrong You never left me alone But you forgave me And you kept on blessing This I recall to my mind Therefore I have hope It's because of your mercies That we are not consumed Because thy compassion fails not They are new every morning Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness yeah, 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 yeah. As I look back over my life I can see how your love is guiding me Even though I've done wrong Yeah. 
Lord in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and wrong. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me.
worship. You know, I, I've, I've felt people who had shackles. Go ahead. I, I felt you all who had shackles and knowing that your shackles are, have, have fallen from you. I, I, I felt you understanding and, and, and just thanking God that those things that used to hold you down ain't holding you down right now. And the reason why they're not holding you down no, no longer because you were worth dying for. And as I listen to Major sing, God, God gave you a voice, Major, to sing. You know, God never gives you a gift not to use it. And so if you had something God needed you to use, sometimes he's got to break you in order to make you, amen? And, and I, I know we're out of the worship experience, but there's somebody just wants to one more be in, just, 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 just in your own way, however you need to do it. Don't, don't let nobody else take you away from your presence with God. In your own way, just know that you're worthy. And you're worthy of all of your blessings. You're, you're worthy of all of your gifts. You're worthy of all your materials. Don't, don't, don't hide your material blessings. You, you're worthy of everything God gave you. If you got a big house, invite people over. If you got extra room, let somebody stay in. If you got a nice car, let somebody ride in it so they can see what God can do when you're faithful to Him. And then just, 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 just take a moment just to worship God. That rest of those of you who are cancers of Bible, they gave you days, they gave you months, but you're still here. That you, you know that it was only God. You're worthy. Yeah. worthy. That's why he died for you. He could have wiped us out just like he did Noah's generation. But he sent us a son. Because we were worth dying for. Oh, yeah. And if he was worthy enough to die for us we should be glad enough to give him praise Amen. yeah thank you so very much if you have your bibles turn with us to isaiah 54 isaiah 54 Isaiah 54, beginning with verse 1. The King James Version says, Sing, O barren, thou that dost not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not. Lengthen thine cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Single barren, that thou dost not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. Uh -huh. Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than tr the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Uh -huh and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent. 
I must give credit where honor and where credit and honor is due. I want to thank first and foremost <coughs> Elder Lakin for presenting this text to me as I was in meditation about how I will introduce what we're going to talk about. And I want to thank God for her for so many things. Um, for laying hands just a few minutes ago. Go wash your hands now, but uh, thank God for your laying hands. And maybe you just took away this fever, but I thank God Amen. for your prayers and your strength. Amen. Isaiah says, enlarge the place of thy tent. And that's what I want to talk about this Sunday morning, about enlarging the tent. And that's our subject this Sunday morning, enlarging or expanding rather. The tent. My brothers and my sisters, there's some things in life you have to speak into existence. I, I don't know where you are in your growth, where you are on your Christian journey. I know that some of you not only on still on milk, but some of y'all still on powdered milk. And you ain't ready to eat the meat of all the gospel. But there's some of us who are now matured enough in the faith to understand that there's some things you can speak yeah. into existence and it will come to pass. When my great grandfather, I.S. Levy, died in 1968, he left our funeral home in a family trust, which means all three children and all nine grandchildren were owners of the business. The business was not doing well. I started working there in 15 and noticed that the history and the, the tradition and the, the, the temple was no longer a temple. And the services that we were providing were to our families were not at the level and at the scale and not at the epitome, uh, epitome of excellence that my great grandfather started. And I told my dad on October 13th, 1993, that we needed to buy the funeral home and run Levy's funeral home. And my dad purchased the funeral home on July 15th, 1995. Some things in life you have to speak into existence. When Darren Horn was fired in March of 1992 and then Frank Martin was hired to be our assistant basketball, new IB, our new head basketball coach at his press conference when he was named the head basketball coach at the University of South Carolina. After the press conference, I was the second person in line. Mark, I went up to him and I said, hi, I'm Chris Levy. I am right. the team chaplain. Right. I didn't ask him, did he need one? Right. I didn't ask him, did he want one? Right. I didn't ask him, could I still be one? Yeah. I went up to him, Veronica, and said, I am yeah. that I am. And now I got my own office. Four years ago, four years ago, one Erica Lakin came up to me and says, I'm going to be your minister of music. And I said, who are you going to replace? She said, I'm not going to replace nobody. You're just going to add me on. And since she's been here, the choir has doubled by addition. There's some things in life you, you've got to just speak into existence. Two years ago, Ron went to San and said, we're going to have our own business. And a lot of y'all got on Ashley Kingston right now because there's something you just got to speak into existence. Fourteen years ago, I took a young girl on a cruise and took her to the back of the boat. And I gave her two choices. You take this ring or you going over. <laughs> and we've been together ever since. Amen. Some things you just got to speak into existence. Amen. If you can tell that the doctor tell you cancer, you tell them, no, I ain't got it. You might still have it, but you don't ever have to believe what the report of the doctor. Just repeat, repeat the report of the Lord. If they say that your child can't read, don't believe that. Just know that your child will read, that they might learn differently than somebody else. If they've got behavior problem, no, they just behave differently. And we got to work this thing out. Some things you just got to speak and believe that God will make a way out of. No way. And don't be worried about people who don't believe who don't have faith, who think you crazy, who think because God wants to see where your faith is. God wants to see where your maturity is. God wants to see where your belief pattern is. And if you believe in him, he will make everything else work out and watch your enemies. Celebrate.
great. What they thought was impossible. Well, here in chapter 54 of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah speaks something into existence. Isaiah is more than just one of the prophets. He is the major prophet of the major prophets. Isaiah is the prophet that some would say is the gospel of the Old Testament. For it's Isaiah who paints the futuristic picture of our Jesus. Isaiah that talks about how he will be and what he will look like and where he will come from. And that he will be a root that will come out of dry ground. And I, I, I didn't understand that until this last week, why that was so very important. Because there's no way for a root to come out of dry ground because a root has to have water. And one of the things that has to happen is that you've got to have water to break the shell around the seed. So that the seedling is able to expand and grow. But the shell cannot be broken unless there's water around that shell to break that shell. So that the water will allow that seedling to grow. In other words, God again will make possible the impossible. And that, that Messiah would come from a place where we, we wouldn't think he would come from. That no one thought that the Messiah would come from the back streets of Bethlehem out of a dirty barn. And just like as a root has to come out of dirt, so as Jesus had to come out of dirt so that he might clean up our dirty lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's he that is writing in the period of the Deutero Isaiah times. He is a prophet of the kingdom of Judah. But he is talking mostly, Sister Dunbar, about the ten tribes that are in the northern kingdom of Israel. And it's very interesting that Jerusalem is in Judea, in Judah, in the southern kingdom of Judah. And it is the city of God, but it's only two of the tribes. The ten other tribes are in northern Israel. And they, during this time, had been exiled in Assyria. And, and Isaiah's writing to Hezekiah, and he's talking to Hezekiah, and he's saying, Hezekiah, we've got to be careful. And we've seen what has happened to our brothers and our sisters in the northern kingdom. And I'm telling you that the reason why they have been trampled, the reason why they have been exiled is because of their disobedience. And if we don't get it right with God, the same thing is going to happen to us. As a matter of fact, I, I see it on the way that there's going to be also an exile period of our people. But don't you worry about it. Because God is going to give us a Messiah. And God is going to give us a savior. And we're not sure right now whether he was talking about Cyrus the king that would free the people. Or is he looking futuristic towards Jesus. But one thing we do know that his prophecy was correct. Because the people didn't have to stay in exile forever. And one day they did return to Israel. One day well, they did return to Jerusalem. They did return to their homeland. And he's telling them even before they were returning. Expand the tent. They had not yet been trampled. The temple had not even yet been erected. The temple had not yet been destroyed. The temple had not yet been rebuilt. The temple had not yet been brought back to the place of Zion. And he's telling him, Ron, even before all this happens, go ahead and expand your minds and your heart and your soul so you will be prepared. For when that time comes. Yeah. Chapters 34 through 35 describe how the exile would return to Israel. And then after telling the people that Jerusalem and the people would be restored, he raises the query in 53, whose report will you believe? And who has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Whose report will you believe for those who tell you that, you know, we are a chosen people. We are God's people. We are not the chosen one, his crazy self. Yeah, you chosen to get out of our house. That's what you've been chosen to do. You know, those who exalt themselves will be abased. 
Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about because y'all don't watch CNN. You got to watch CNN every day. Those who exalt themselves will be abased. He says, but get ready, get ready, because the Messiah is on the way. And he's, then he goes and talks about this symbolism of a barren woman. Like Hannah, this symbolism of a barren woman who has not been able to produce a child. Thinking and acknowledging the fact that one of the purposes of womanhood is reproduction and the bearing of children. But it is an honor. And then some that will remain barren. But even if you remain barren and won't ever be blessed with a child physically, I promise you in Jesus' name, all of us who got children, we'll give you ours. And by the time we get back, you'll send them back. <laughs> and, and, but he's talking about this symbolism of people who are bearing nothing. Not bearing just in your womb. Not bearing just because you can't have a child. But people who are fruitless. Because there are a whole lot of people in here. I'm sorry to let you in on a little secret. You're spiritually fruitless. How many people have you even invited to your church? Fruitless. What ministry are you a part of? Fruitless. How many people have you helped bring to Jesus and help their lives? Fruitless. How many of you have volunteered in children's church? Volunteer the back to school back. Volunteer for trunk or treat. Volunteer for when we feed the football teams. How many of you volunteer when we be packing these backpacks? Fruitless. And just because you give your little tithes and your little offerings, that ain't helping. Now, don't stop. <laughs> but God needs your hand and your heart as much as he needs your wallet. Yeah. Because we can't do nothing with what we buy unless your hands are there to help us. Yes, right. And he's saying we've got a nation full of fruitless people. But before we can grow, We've got to expand the tent. We've got to grow the hearts and the minds of the people to be prepared for what God is about to do. And he says that one of the things that we've got to also be prepared to do is increase and enlarge the tent for the Gentiles. Listen to this. In Isaiah, Chavez, in Isaiah, Isaiah is the first Paul. Isaiah says we've got to open up our hearts and our minds to allow the Gentiles, who are pagan according to them, who know not God, to allow them to know God for themselves. And that this Messiah that is going to come is going to enlarge and increase the tent so that all, somebody say all, all. because the Jews thought that they were the only ones who could love God. And could have God. And to be blessed by God. And were the chosen of God. If anybody is the chosen of God. It's big mama's people who've been the chosen of God. All the hell we done caught and been through. And he says we've got to increase our hearts and our minds. To make sure that the tent is large enough for everybody. And there's a problem with a whole lot of us. We only want people in the tent that look like us. Who act like us, who got the same zip code as us, who drive the same cars as us. But this ain't no social club. And definitely ain't the country club. This is God's house. And all of God's children, no matter where they come from, no matter their color, no creed, even no matter their sexual orientation, all should be welcome up in God's house. You can't, you can't clean fish until you catch them. You can't. But the problem is all y'all want to go to Captain D's. You don't want to do no fishing. Ain't nobody want to get no rod and no reel out and put a worm on and sit down there for hours. Drinking your drink of choice. 
and then got to scale that fish and fillet that fish and batter that fish and fillet that fish and cook yeah. that fish. No, you just won't go through the drive through right. And now you're mad at Popeye's. <laughs> well, my brothers and my sisters, I'm here to declare unto you that it's time that we expand the tent. It is time that we follow the word of God and that we expand the tent. Beginning January 5th, 2020, we are going to two services. Sunday school, put it up, will begin at 8 o'clock. Y'all be up anyhow, anyhow. You don't have to already use the restroom at six. <laughs> Sunday school will be from eight to eight forty-five. Our first service will be just like our normal service, and our traditional service has always been, from nine to ten thirty. How many of you enjoyed August? How many of you enjoyed that hour of power? Well. The hour of power will become a permanent feature of our services here at the Brooklyn Church. The second service will be that hour of power from 11 to 12 noon. So you will have the choice as we expand the tent. Uh -huh. If you want to come and we won't be using the titles, but the 9 o'clock service will stay the same as what we do here every day. We'll stay more traditional. If you want to dress down, if you want to just be here for an hour for that hour of power, we have that second service here for you. Our goal is to serve this present age, our calling to fulfill. We want the tent to be large enough for everyone to enjoy and come to Jesus. I understand, I understand that it is going to be a big adjustment. I understand that some people are going to have to adjust. That's when nobody didn't really clap at first because they're like, oh, wait, 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 whoa, oh, oh. oh, oh. wait a minute. Wait. I mean, I got to get up an hour early. Uh, oh, well, I get to sleep in an hour later. There will be something for everyone. But you know something? The main attraction will still be Jesus. The main attraction will still be Jesus. Why are you doing this, Pastor? I'll give you the answer. Because God said so. Because God said so. I'm not being arrogant about it. I'm not being egotistical about it. I'm not being conceited about it. I've been sitting on this egg for three years, knowing that one day we were going to have to expand the tent. And I sat on that egg, and I really didn't want that egg to ever crack. With all my weight, that egg was going to have to crack at some point in time. And then one day in a meeting, Andre Lewis knew that I was sitting on the egg and told me what was inside of the egg without me and him ever having a conversation. I shared this vision with Ron, I shared this vision with Erica, and I continued to sit on the egg. Uh -huh. And six months ago, Erica said, when are we going to two services? Uh -huh. And I replied to her in text form, six reasons why we weren't going to do it. And they all began with I. I am too busy. Uh -huh. I have three jobs, <laughs> two children and one wife. I am not ready. I've got some things to get in order at the funeral home. And she replied back, do you realize you just said six eyes? The number six is the number of the devil. Yeah. And I is our ego. And so I had to put the devil's ego aside and follow what has thus saith the Lord. We're going to need you. 
your spirit of adjustment, but we're also going to need your spirit of volunteerism, expanding to two services, and that's why we're not waiting to December, Doc, to tell you about it. We're telling you now to get your hearts, your minds ready for what God is about to do. We're going to need more assistance. We, our, we still will have children's church at both services, All right. which means that we will need more volunteers down at the children's church. Men's fellowship, get ready, get ready, get ready. Right. We got to flip this parking lot in 30 minutes. So yeah. we're going to need men out in the parking lot helping us. Amen. We, we're going to need you because God has a work for us to do as we increase the kingdom for his sake, not for the name of Brooklyn, but for his sake and for his desires in our life. And finally, where God gives a vision, he will make provision. And I want to thank our deacons. I want to thank our ministry team and our leaders. I want to thank all of you who've been part of this process. Unless you have been fooling me and lying, we have all been on one accord. Everyone has not been able to see A through Z, which is fine. People have had questions, and that is fine. But there's a difference when someone asks a question and when someone is questioning you. And I've never felt through this process that anyone was questioning the vision of God. You can ask questions because some people need to see A through Z. But I'm going to also let you know that Abraham will tell you sometimes you just can't see all the way what God is about to do. Sometimes you just got to walk in faith and trust that where God has told you to go, he will lead you and direct you. And so I pray that you walk with us. Either you're going to wake up an hour early or you're going to sleep an hour later. But one way or another... The name of the Lord will be praised. Give God praise today for what he's about to do. Amen. Stand on your feet. Thank you. There might be one today and you want to give your heart to Christ. There might be one today that you want to join early on this mission and this vision that God has given us. You want your soul saved you will know you will have a church that will meet all of your needs you will have a church that will love you a church that will embrace you a church that will help you grow as we grow because none of us truly are where we're supposed to be all the way amen, amen. come on God is not through with me yet amen. but I've come this far Anybody come this far? But I've come this far. Leaning and depending on him. There might be again one today. You, you feel the spirit of the Lord saying to give your life to Christ so that you might be saved and you're part of that tent that we call heaven. There might be another person today that you just want to be part of our fellowship. You want a place where you can call home. We open our arms to you right now to welcome you to the Brooklyn Church. There's a family that wants to be part of this ministry and call Brooklyn home. We invite you to Jesus right now. We've come this far. Come to Jesus while you have time. Come on, let's sing this old hymn of the church. We've come. We've come. Oh!
my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it now rest through and abide with each one of you, now henceforth and forevermore. And let all of God's children lift their voice in one accord.